Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, I'm Andy uh, and Wex have asked me to come in today to talk to you a little bit more about audio, microphones, that whole shebang. We want to figure out what's the best microphone for what situation, be that if you're shooting an interview, be that that you're shooting fox pops anywhere in busy environments, kind of like this one. And to really get a kind of grip on choosing the right equipment that's best for your situation. Today we're going to be shooting on a bunch of Sony cameras. So all of our microphones are tailored to the Sony cameras, but the characteristics and the rules apply to all microphones. So there are many different brands that do many similar things. But today we're going to be looking at these models in particular. So there are a few ways to do it. You can have a dedicated sound sound person and they'll do it externally, maybe with a boom mic. You can use something like the XLR adapter on here and use already established professional microphones. But today we've got two newer models of existing microphones that Sony have made. So we've got the EMC M1 here and we've got the EMC W2BT Mark II. And these are upgrades on some pretty interesting microphones. So I'm gonna go over them one by one now. So here we've got the W2BT Mark II lavalier microphones. These have had a slight upgrade, always good to see. Now come in a little charging case, USB-C, very welcome. Charge it with power banks at home with a million cables that you've probably already got. Two transmitters in here. So we've got one on me that we're using now. If we had someone else next to us, great. We could turn that on and you'd be able to hear both of us the way that you're hearing me now. So one feature that makes a return is the low cut and the noise cancellation. So I'm gonna demonstrate you what this sounds like. At the moment we're off. I'm gonna put on the low cut. There we go. Now I've been told by Luke, who's behind the camera, that this definitely cuts out a lot of the rumble. I think I sound a bit more bassy. I think basically it's cut some of that frequency out that makes it a bit better to understand me in general. And then if I come to our general noise cancellation, it amps it up a little bit more. I think I'm right in hearing that I sound a bit more tinny. If you're in a busy situation, if you're filming an event, maybe if you're at a wedding, might be good. Just note that when you're using these features, it has a slight trade-off, but it definitely helps you achieve more in certain situations. And over here, we've got the M1, which is an upgrade to the B1M. So the B1M was very directional, but this introduces a whole heap of other options to do with that. So whereas with here, we've got something that's more dedicated to the subject in the screen, like I am now, but here we've got something that can be a little bit more tailor-made to the scene that you're shooting, to the ambience that you're shooting. So on the back here, we've actually got the polar patterns and you can see that we can shoot all around us. We can turn on the microphone that's in front and behind. We can turn, turn the one left and right and get a stereo pattern. And I think it opens up more of an opportunity to build the scene that you're in. So I quite like using stereo mics because we have a left and a right channel. Now, when we're using this, we can set this to stereo and it uses the left and right channels. So when we walk through an area like we're going to do in a bit, you'll be able to pick up things on the left and pick up things on the right. And it just adds that little bit more, I guess, immersion to what you're shooting. Rather than having one singular mono track, we're just opening it up and giving a bit more depth to what we're creating. So we're here in an incredibly crowded borough market and I'm wearing the W2BT Mark II, which is the uh, lapel microphone that Sony make. Now, we're using the lapel because obviously it's very loud and ideally you want the microphone as close to your subject as possible, hence why it's here. The benefit of the Mark IIs is, A, yeah, it's wireless, the microphone's built in, you don't need any external lapels, not that that's a problem, because you can still plug one in. Um, it's light, it's got its own battery life, I believe it's nine hours, which I think is more than adequate for most shoots these days, even if you're filming a big conference maybe, maybe you've got two or three hours worth of talking, these all last throughout the day. 
The benefit of the Mark IIs, obviously, as we've covered earlier, is that you can have two transmitters. So we've got number one, I've got number two in my pocket. So if we had two people in, uh, in the market at the moment, you pick both of us up, absolutely A-OK. -okay. Um, and especially with people weaving in and out, and if we're walking through the scene, um, it makes more sense to have a lapel close to your subject instead of having a directional mic on the camera or a stereo mic on the camera because obviously if that's going to pick up more ambient noise it's less desirable than well this basically because we're here and you can hear me hopefully a-ok -okay. so having the lav mic is beneficial for for me for my vocals so that you can hear me which is ideal in most situations uh, but it's not good for ambience really um, so what we've got here is we've got the M1, now the ECM M1 on top of the FX3. And because this has such a wide variety of, kind of polar patterns that we can use, so what I'm going to do is set it to the stereo pattern and walk through, uh, and you'll be able to hear the dedicated left and right channels um, coming into this camera. So we'll cut this in. So hopefully that will give you a quick idea of creating that ambience and being able to really build up the scene. And that just gives you a bit of an idea of how to build the audio in whatever particular video that you're making. So I've got one of the mics on now and we are in a very long tunnel. I think you can kind of see where this is going. So the range on these microphones in particular, it's about 200 meters, um, which I think for most use cases is actually pretty damn good. So the connection in this um, is said to be one of the most reliable they've put in a microphone, which is great because, you know, we don't know what wireless signals are down here. Um, you know, it could be a whole multitude of anything. Uh, and so keeping that connection is key. I wonder how far I'm going to go before something happens. Well, 200 meters. 200 meters is probably to the end over here. So I, I stopped pretty much where that bike is, that line bike. We are out and about at the moment, which isn't what everyone's going to be shooting. And so how can I explain this to you without having to set up a studio, for example? Well, put it this way. Say you've got a microphone like this. You've got me speaking. Imagine you're doing a cooking channel. Maybe you do recipes, maybe it's just general food uh, video content. But what you can actually do is use this for whoever is speaking, going through the recipe, telling people what ingredients to have or what techniques to use. But then you can use a second microphone. Again, this goes directly into the camera, this will go directly into the camera. And what you could actually do is put this next to a chopping board, or you could put it, I don't know, over a blender. Not that everyone wants to hear a blender, but it gives you that adaptability to use a second microphone to engage a little bit more with the content that you're shooting. You don't have to use it with two people. You don't have to use it as two sources of sound, but it is good to know that you've got that adaptability. And if you think outside the box, you can be pretty creative with it. So I've spoken about typically more production oriented environments, but social media, as big as it is, these microphones are kind of more adapted to that way of shooting, I think. So if you imagine maybe you've got you know, maybe you're a, a camera operator for someone who's maybe running a, a product, maybe they're an influencer, or maybe you're just narrating something that's going on. I can choose the reverse microphone. And so I'm shooting what I've got in front of me, but I'm narrating. And so it's kind of like as if you're just using a phone, except from you've just got bit more punch to it. 
And that's what I like about these, is it allows you to get a little bit more adaptability, clearer sound, but there's little to no extra effort that's needed. And I think that, for this at least, is perfect. So I'm gonna level with you. Um, we haven't had these for very long. Actually, we've only had them for a few hours, so haven't been able to test them in all the environments and situations that we would have liked. But today, they've performed admirably. I mean, we're in a pretty windy situation now. This lavalier microphone that's under my coat is connected, sounds great. The physical dials on this have allowed me to adapt my shooting environment because we've been in some busy places. We've, I've been able to speak to it. We've got stereo sound. We are in an age of where you will be able to find something small, light, and amazing for whatever your budget is. And so with the Sony ECM line, um, the whole family of microphones have something in however you want to shoot. So whatever you're looking for, you're bound to find it. Thanks for watching. I'm Andy. See you in the next video.